Coming up today on Creme 2 News at Noon, we have some clouds filling the sky and showers already beginning now around the northwest. We'll be talking about what to expect for the rest of your day and the rest of your week. NASA is taking some heat for calling off the first all-female spacewalk. Now Spokane astronaut Anne McLean is talking about her role in that decision. Plus, Vice President Pence has his eyes set on space. How soon he wants astronauts to return to the moon. Thanks so much for being with us here on Creme 2 News at Noon. I'm Jen York. Laura Papetti has the day off. And spring showers are moving into the region this afternoon. Evan Arani is in the Weather Center now tracking everything that we need to know. Good afternoon, Jen. We have already started seeing some of these showers pop up on satellite radar at the noon hour, where we're seeing them mainly just around that southern third portion of Washington State and pushing into the central and southern panhandle. You can also see a good amount of cloud cover moving up north. So really, the clouds are setting the stage for the precipitation and then down toward Pomeroy, Lewiston, and moving into the southern Palouse area, as well as the central and southern panhandle. Handle. That is where we see those showers right now. You can even see if we give this a pause at where we are right now and then zoom in a little bit closer to areas like Walla Walla and Pomeroy. Take a look. They're getting a good amount of it right now and some of it is coming down in the form of freezing rain as well. So in areas where we're seeing higher elevations about above 3500 feet. That's where we're seeing some freezing rain and some snow uh, on uh, our future tracker and on our uh, satellite radar right now. So you can see uh, mild and cloudy has been the theme for most of the last couple hours and uh, it will continue for a little bit of time here in the Spokane region before the system migrates farther north. But then that transition happens to more showers and breezier conditions as low pressure moves in and we see that pressure change. We see the wind speeds pick up with it. So we'll be seeing 20 mile per hour gusts possible all throughout your afternoon and evening. And this wet weather doesn't seem to leave us on the 48 hours uh, that we have this running forward for you. So you can see pretty wet weather all the way through your Thursday evening and then likely maybe even into a portion of your Friday morning. What we've got outside as far as Silver Mountain Resort goes is beautiful blue skies, but we're going to start seeing uh, those uh, those showers move in. You can already start to see some of that cloud cover. And uh, as far as the 12 hour forecast goes, temperatures are expected to max out at uh, the mid 50s this afternoon. Uh, those chance of showers in the Spokane region jump up toward about uh, 5 p.m. and onward. Jen. Evan, thank you so much. A community comes together to remember Kittitas County Sheriff's Deputy Ryan Thompson. Last night, dozens of people turned out for a candlelight vigil for Deputy Thompson. He was killed in the line of duty just over a week ago. Neighbors say the small town has changed in the weeks since the shooting. They say the mood is somber but they say they are facing the tragedy together as a community. There's all sorts of signs saying Kittitas strong or, or bringing us together. There's been a lot of tears sh shed um, and a lot of hugs and a lot of love. Deputy Thompson leaves behind a wife and three children. A memorial service is planned for him tomorrow at Central Washington University in Ellensburg. It starts at 2 o'clock at Nicholson Pavilion. Spokane astronaut Anne McLean is responding to criticism today after NASA scrapped the first all-female spacewalk. McLean tweeted she was part of that decision. McLean and Christina Cook were set to make history Friday, but that's not happening because only one appropriately sized spacesuit is ready. Janet Shemlian explains the project will still take place, but a male astronaut will walk in McLean's place. NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Christina Cook might have to wait a bit longer to walk into the history books. The first all female spacewalk will not go on as planned because of an issue with the size of the spacesuits on board the space station. McLean trained in a large suit on Earth, but on a spacewalk last week, she wore the medium. She told NASA it gave her more mobility, which is needed to replace the batteries. The problem, there's only one medium suit configured for a spacewalk, and Cook also wears that size. Although they have others in storage, it would take 12 hours to prepare another one. It makes a lot more sense to let them continue to concentrate on visualizing their tasks, doing all those things to get ready, as opposed to trying so hard to make sure we stick to this same crew Astronaut Nick Haig will now join Cook on the six and a half hour mission. The most important thing to me is that there's, you know, two crew members that are comfortable uh, that go out the hatch, complete the activity successfully and make it safely back inside. So obviously that's my number one priority. Many criticized the change on social media, including Hillary Clinton, who tweeted, make another suit. NASA says a future spacewalk involving both women is still possible. 
Earlier this month, McLean talked about the importance of future generations seeing female astronauts taking lead roles. It's important for a lot of people to look out and, and see someone that looks like them. Fewer than a third of NASA's 38 astronauts are women. Cook will become the 14th American woman to walk in space out of more than 200 spacewalks total. If I can be an inspiration to any child that wants to grow up and get into the business of space exploration, then I'm absolutely thrilled to do so. But now's come the time for us to make the next giant leap and return American astronauts to the moon, establish a permanent base there and develop the technologies to take American astronauts to Mars and beyond. Well, the U.S. could send people back to the moon for the first time since 1972. At the National Space Council meeting today, Vice President Mike Pence announced the U.S. will return to the moon within the next five years. He says we're going with or without NASA, where experts say it would take at least nine years to get back. President Trump wants it done sooner. The vice president says the administration will use commercial companies if necessary. Hundreds of pilots are in Seattle today discussing fixes to Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. This follows the deadly Lion Air crash in October and the Ethiopian Airlines crash March 10th. Engineers are proposing fixes to the plane's safety system. It's feared bad data from that system forced the nose of both planes down, causing them to crash. In a separate issue yesterday, Southwest pilots flying a 737 MAX 8 made an emergency landing after an engine issue. That plane was being ferried to another location. No passengers were on board. Coming up on 1207 now. Well, in the town known for the Bulldogs, it's a cat helping Gonzaga get the attention of Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, it sounds a little familiar, right? This all comes as the GU men's basketball team heads into the Sweet 16.